TFL EV is brought to you by Flow Charger, maker of reliable, high quality charging stations for your electric vehicle. As you probably suspect, the biggest problem in America to electric car adoption, or even owning an electric car or road tripping an electric car, like this brand new Volvo Recharge, is the public charging network infrastructure. And here I am at the local EA, and I've been trying to charge this car, and I get this. Not grand, and it's all too common, but there may be a solution, and it's not the one you're thinking. Let me show you. <laughs> it won't let go. <laughs> now compare this. Oh, there we go. There we go. My fault. Now compare this experience to going to the local gas station <laughs> and filling up your car. Not only don't you need an app, but for the most part, most gas stations work every time you use them and you don't have to switch pumps most of the time. But let me show you a possible solution. Of course, the solution I'm talking about is this. You could buy a Tesla and you could charge it at the 17,711 locations around America, by far the largest charging network. And as you know, Tesla is opening up that network to CCS cars, in other words, non-Teslas. But the problem with that is that so far, only about a dozen Tesla locations have opened up to non-Teslas. But there's a new solution that we're gonna try out in this video. And do you remember I said there are 17,711 Tesla superchargers around the country? Well, that last number is important, 7-Eleven, because 7-Eleven has announced that they're potentially gonna build a network of chargers at their 9,400 US locations. And one of them is already built, happens to be here in Colorado. So let's go give it a shot. So 7-Eleven has announced that their new charging network is gonna be called 7Charge. What else? And I've just downloaded the app, and I've noticed that there is one not too far from where we're at in Louisville, Colorado. So we're gonna take a ride out there and see if potentially this may be a solution to all of our public charging needs. Now, keep in mind, there's several things I'm gonna be looking for. First and foremost, I never understand why you always have to have an app just to charge your electric car. You don't need an app when you go to the gas station. In fact, all you need is your credit card. But because I suspect you will need an app, I have downloaded the app, so we are ready to use. But if it just accepts credit cards, that will be great. The other potential downside is that, well, they have to build it out, of course, but more importantly, the chargers are only 90 kilowatt hour, which, you know, in a world of Hummer EVs is not grand, but I guess if you're looking for a place that's near your house and you need to charge up your car in a pinch or you're gonna do some shopping, 90 kilowatts is, better than 50, not as good as 150, and certainly not as good as 250, but nevertheless, does give you a lot more options since, like I said, they have 9,400 locations in America and about 560 locations in Canada, which would potentially be a game changer. So um, yeah, let's go try it and see how this Volvo does using the new 7-charge network. So according to uh, apps, I'm only uh, one minute away, so we should be here pretty quickly. And uh, you know, this is the first time using this charging network, so we're gonna be learning together. And really what I'm looking for is uh, how much power it's putting out. And I know that, it's only 90 kilowatts. We already talked about that. But more importantly, how easy it is to use and how convenient it is, I mean, it, it's always been a head scratcher to me why gas stations haven't started adding electric chargers to their locations. But uh, if 7-Eleven's willing to take up the slack, uh, then I am all over it uh, because they are located in many urban areas. Uh, and, uh, you know, they also have uh, Slurpees. So there you go. <laughs> I see the chargers. Yeah, park conveniently uh, next to the uh, store. I'm not seeing any uh, roof, which is bad, because once again, the gas station has a roof, so why don't electric chargers have roofs? I mean, are, are people driving electric cars more eager to get wet? Uh, you'd think that with 
electric cars you wouldn't want to get wet but let's uh let's plug it in and, and see how how it does and how easy it is to use now with the volvo i got to back in because the, the charging port is on the driver's side in the back and hey, car companies, just pick a location, would you? I kind of think the leaf had it right in the nose. Makes it a lot easier to hook up when you just pull in. You also don't have to then unhook if you're towing, but uh, for some reason, it's the Wild West out there when it comes to where you place the uh, charger in the car, the port. Is it in the back? Is it on the side? Is it in the front? Is it on the passenger side? Is it in the roof? Nobody's done that yet. Give that a shot. All right, I'm already liking this. Apparently, I can use a visa, which is great. So that's already a win-win. So let me uh, let me see how easy this works. I'm just going to tap. Okay, that worked. I think it worked. Maybe I got to plug in first. Download the seven. Ch yeah, I don't want to download the app. That's the whole thing. I don't want to download the app. But uh oh, look at this. Already. <laughs> it's pretty heavy. <laughs> I'm already wrestling with the cable. <laughs> you shouldn't have to get your workout plugging in an electric car. All right, so number one, plugged in, start. Verifying, start. Price is 43 cents a kilowatt hour. That's pretty good. Start. Insert visa. I thought I already did that. But I'll try again. There we go. Successful. Verifying. Authorization. You are allowed to start charging. Preparing to start charging. All right, now it's talking to the car. I'd be curious as to what kind of information. Is it still preparing? Charging! The car was at 33%, not zero, when I got here, or around 33. There it goes. Oh, it tells you how many kilowatt hours are being delivered. All right, so uh, charging speed, uh, 166 miles per hour, and we're getting 71 kilowatts, uh, which isn't quite the 90. I was, oh, 72. Maybe it'll speed up as we go along. Uh, but once again, this is a handshake, so the car asks for something else versus what the charger is putting up. But these chargers are supposed to be 90 kilowatt hour chargers. Uh, so we're up to 73. So let's go do a little shopping and see if, uh, if the um, kilowatts increase. And let's see how much we can get in... Well, let's give it... Let's see what time it is now. Um, what do you say? 15 minutes. Let's see how much power we can get in 15 minutes. I think that's a fair amount of time. Or the problem with electric charging is there are surcharges and it can be a money losing business to have a charger because you're based on your highest amount of output of electricity and then you're built accordingly and that could be very expensive but maybe you know when you do things like this when you hear charging and you go and you grab some food maybe um, the charging isn't the end game maybe it's this sure 7-eleven knows let's see how we're doing so we've been here five minutes six minutes now and we're up to okay eight minutes <laughs> eight minutes and we're up to 41 percent let's see what uh what the car says we're charging at oh wow it's up to uh 78 kilowatts so not quite the 90 but you know not bad so it's uh, kind of a mixed bag of donuts uh the charging speed is okay, but I've got this feeling that 90 kilowatts of charging speed is not going to be uh, sustainable in the next five to 10 years. It's a lot better than 50 kilowatts, which is, for instance, what the maximum charging speed on our Bolt is. Uh, but of course, if you've got 
an Ionic 5 or an Ionic, the new Ionic 6, maybe a Porsche or even the Hummer EV, you can go anywhere from 250 to 350 kilowatts of power. Uh, and obviously that's where it's going. The new level 4 chargers the Tesla's building are supposed to be um, 1,000 volts. Uh, and more and more cars are going to 800 volt architecture. Um, and so it's kind of a stopgap. I applaud 7-Eleven. I also love the fact that um, you don't need the app, even though you can have the app. You can just use a credit card. How brilliant is that? Um, the cable is a little bit finicky, uh, and the charging speed is a little bit slow. But, you know, if they do this at all 9,400 American locations and over 500 Canadian locations, now this could be a game changer because Tesla, like I said, has 17,000... <laughs> I just pulled in here to the EV charger who's not an EV. He's looking at me, so I don't know what's up with that. That could also be a problem. Maybe he's going to ice people out. Oh, yeah, he's going to park there. Yeah, that's also a problem uh, because that is definitely not an EV. <laughs> There's a lot more etiquette <laughs> that uh, has to be learned <laughs> before, you know, we uh, all strive into the uh, bold new world of electric vehicles. But like I say, you know, a little bit of iced tea, a little donut. Getting 183 uh, miles an hour and now 79 kilowatts. We're going to give it another uh, six minutes or so and see how much power we've added. That's enough, even though I'm at 44% now, that's enough in a pinch to get you home or maybe to even a much faster charger. So for all you Leaf or actually Mitsubishi Outlander fans, the plug-in hybrid, look, you still get uh, the Chatamo plug, which is a Japanese standard uh, that pretty much is going away in America. And one of the reasons it's going away is because it only gives you about a maximum of 50 kilowatts. So it's not exactly fast. But if you're one of the people who owns a Leaf, which is one of the most popular electric cars out there, you can come to 7-Eleven and charge up. And of course, uh, for the rest of us non-Tesla folk, you've got uh, CCS. So this charger has been here since this opened, which is about five months ago, and I noticed that this is an ABB charger, which are the older chargers uh, that Electrify America used. Uh, they're switching a lot of them to Signet right now, uh, but ABB has been in the charging business for a long time. They certainly know what they're doing. Um, I have a couple other quick observations. First and foremost, once again, I'd like to see a bigger screen. It's a big charger, why not do a bigger screen? But I do love the fact that you could just Swipe a credit card, you don't have to have the app. Uh, and I also love the fact that uh, it's very convenient, which is, I guess, the, the whole point of having a charger at the convenience store. And I would suggest that if they can get these things built out in the next year or two, it will have a dramatic impact on people's charging experiences. So let's turn this off. We've gone 15 minutes uh, and 19 seconds. We've put on about 20% in that time, which is actually not bad. Let's hit stop and see how much we paid for that. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, a new charging network is born, and it's good. See you guys next time. Ciao.